access information through you and from you, but could you describe something that somebody could do that would be simple for them? Sure. Um, one thing I like to teach is what's called a four-way neck stretch. This could be done seated, could be done standing, could be done in a chair. So whether you're standed, standing or seated in a chair, you want to make sure that your feet are grounded into the floor. So you're really going to press both feet down. You're going to feel some activation, some energy in your legs. Then you want to imagine that you can actually lift your torso out of your waist. So you're going to sit up as straight as you can and still be comfortable. Your spine is as straight as it can be. Once you've done that, your shoulders will likely come up. You want to drop your shoulders down and back. And then you want to have your chin parallel to the floor so that you'd be looking straight ahead. And all we're going to do now is move our neck in four directions. So you would look straight ahead and inhale. And then exhale, turn your head and neck to the right, just as far as it feels right for you right in this moment. And you're going to be looking over your right shoulder. Then you're going to stand or sit up just a little bit straighter, press your right shoulder back a little bit more, and gazing over the shoulder. And whenever you don't know what to do, that's a moment to take a deep breath. And then we can inhale, exhale, turn your head and neck back to center. Inhale, exhale, turn your head and neck the other way. When you turn in the other direction, you're going to notice that it feels different. It's not going to feel exactly the same. And so we can notice how does it feel on this side? And again, the left shoulder presses slightly back, chin parallel to the ground. You might notice, has this gotten real serious for me? It's okay to smile while you're doing yoga. And then inhale, exhale, turn your head and neck back to center so that you're looking straight ahead. Inhale, exhale, drop your chin to your chest. And then if you can actively press your chin into your chest, you'll probably feel sensation in the back of your neck. And again, if you don't know what to do, that might be a time to take a deep breath. And then we'll inhale, exhale, bring your head and neck back to center. We're looking straight ahead again. Inhale, exhale, press your chin up towards the ceiling so that you're now ga gazing upward. So you're just going to go back to where it feels right for you today, right in this moment. For some people, it can be scary to look up. So just going back to what feels right for you. And now if you really want to take a risk, you can open your mouth as wide as you can. Stick out your tongue. Nobody's watching you. It's your own experience. Bring your tongue back in. Inhale, exhale, coming back to center, looking straight ahead again. So that is wow. a four-way neck stretch. Um, it's something that I maybe one of the first things I'll teach people in a yoga class. I just did that while you were describing it. And I have to tell you that uh, had all kinds of physical sensations and energetic sensations while you were doing that. Thank you. I'll, I'll do that. I sit at my computer and I'm doing things quite frequently. That'll be helpful to me as far as that's concerned. Uh, Wow. Yeah, that's so, that's great for in front of the computer. And also, you know, what I'll say is a pain in the neck for some people is not figurative. It's literal. So yeah. this just this simple movement, you do it once a day is going to help reduce any comfort you have in your neck. Yeah. And, and I would imagine the more you do it, the more you're able to turn your head and the more relaxed it is. It's just over a period of time. That's that's great. Right. And um, it's really important being able to turn your head. I mean, if you drive, right, if you're driving, you need to be able to turn your head. So definitely, as you practice, the more you do it, the more flexibility you'll have. Yes, thank you for that. And, and we're we're spending a, a little more time on the yoga, wanting to make sure we get a little bit into at least the relaxation meditation. Uh, can you talk for just a couple of minutes about that? I'd like to have more time to do so, but I want to make sure we get to a couple of other things. What is relaxation meditation? How does that fit or feel in reference to yoga or uh, independent in people's lives? Right. So um, many people practice what we call mindfulness meditation, and that's a form of meditation that I've taught for maybe 25 years. I taught mindfulness meditation using your breath as a point of focus. When you notice you've lost your attention on the breath, come back and do that again. It's very simple. People can understand those instructions and it seems to make sense. But what I found over the years is that it's more difficult than it might seem because what you're being told is do something that you're not gonna be able to do for a long period of time, 
focus on your breath. When you're not doing that thing that's pretty much impossible, then do it again. And for me and for my students, I find over time that that got very, very um, tiring just to think about it. I'm on my breath, I'm off my breath, now I come back again. So what I wanted to do was to develop something new, um, a form of meditation that would right from the beginning feel easy, feel enjoyable, or at least tolerable. So the basic tenet of relaxation meditation is that you don't need to go back to your point of focus. You can choose to. So we might start on our breath, but eventually we'll drift away. When we notice we've drifted away, well, now you have a choice. Do I want to go back to my breath or do I want to just sit quietly for a moment and then see what happens next? And in this way, we make this form of meditation not feel like work. It feels like something that's easy to do because you have choices of what you're going to do with your mind. And happier in 15 minutes a day. <laughs> yeah, um, that's what studies show <laughs> that okay. in any right. well, form of meditation, if you practice consistently, one of the benefits is it's going to make you happier. Absolutely. I can imagine the freedom. And I mean, I've been meditating for decades and, and in different ways, but I hear I hear this uh, again, like your free flow of freedom form of yoga, uh, that intuitive third stage you were talking about. This is rather than focused on a routine, you're actually trusting and following the intuition that you develop by being in, in a meditative state. So, Jim, well, you got everything. Our... Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. You're a good student. <laughs> well, I'm listening. I'm listening. And I, and I love hearing what you've got to say. I mean, and I'm sure people can can learn so much more through your books, uh, uh, your DVD, uh, all that you have to offer. Um, I, I know you mentioned something about having DVDs on YouTube where people can learn and practice. Um, and, and then your books, uh, how, how could people get your books if they wanted to, to get one? Um, so my books are available at Amazon.com. You can just do a search for Gary Halperin. Um, I produced a yoga DVD um, in early part of the 2000s and sold it for many years. But now I've recently, during the uh, coronavirus crisis, I've put it up on YouTube for free. So you can just go to search for Gary Halperin on YouTube. You can easily find that 50-minute yoga experience. Most excellent. Wow. Another public service, another giving of your heart and soul to help make a difference for humanity, Gary. And, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm not uh, just patting you on the back or, or, or trying to make you sound good. You are an amazing man. And I, I know all of who you are and how you are in your practice as a facilitator, as a person, in your family. And, and what I've always known of you, you've made such a difference for so many people. And I so appreciate knowing who you are and what you've been able to do for so many. So thank you for being here today. Please take a look at Amazon, uh, see Gary's books there, uh, take a look at YouTube and, and you can uh, learn more about the yoga we've been talking about and, and be able to experience some of that meditative process that he is a proponent of and a facilitator for, uh, and, and just someone who is in a place that's making a difference. And we certainly need that right now in our lives to physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, uh, on a level of awareness and consciousness, uh, live different lives. Um, and, and Gary's been teaching uh, at, at centers. I've had Radiance and, and Sarasota Center of Light. We're now not public. And uh, so we look forward to Gary being able to have students in a studio again as we move forward. Uh, the center has always got things going on there right now, all online. Uh, through Facebook Live. Uh, there are some Zoom classes. We're there to be of service and to support you. Please let us know how we can do that. Uh, Gary's uh, contact information will be available on this podcast. Uh, you can contact him on email at GaryHalpern at Yahoo.com. And you can go to his website, www.MeditateToRelax.com, and see more information there. Um, I'm also available to be supportive and helpful to you in whatever way I can as a counselor, as just someone to speak to or connect with. Uh, don't hesitate to look at our website, sarasotacenterofelight.com, at our calendar, uh, what's going on there, and, and let us know how we can help, what we can do, how we can be there for you. 
Uh, thank you so much again, Gary, for being here with me, for bringing your energy, your vibration, the illumination of who you are and what you do to us today, and us being able to have this conversation that's going to continue as you do make a difference for so many. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate you having me on. I want everybody to please be well, be safe. Blessings to each and all.